Hey, welcome back to the channel, everyone. So yesterday I made a video about asteroid mining and why the economics of it just don't make sense and you just can't make a business model that works. And I said that I'd be checking and looking into these asteroid mining companies and to see if any of them are frauds. Well, it turns out it's mainly just this one company, Astroforge, that's actually gotten funded so far. And they basically lie about everything across the board. And somehow they managed to raise $40 million here. And actually, they've raised a total of $55 million. So after looking into this, I basically think this is probably the biggest fraud since Theranos in Silicon Valley. And I think it's just a really bad situation. But yeah, you can see it's a kind of a Y Combinator company and you have all these uh, venture capital funds that are investing millions of dollars into it. Okay. And sort of the plan here is to mine platinum and platinum group metals on near earth asteroids. Okay. But we'll be explaining why it makes no sense. So in this article, he's talking about the funding round and then he just says, they are on track to return the first amount of platinum back to Earth before the end of this decade. Okay, so at least he's he's honest about that that goal. Now, it's interesting that they go for platinum because platinum is actually much less valuable than gold by mass. It's about two or three times less valuable. And the reason for this is that it's actually relatively more abundant in asteroids than, than gold is. But it actually is still less abundant overall than gold. Now, the CEO of this company, his name is Matthew Gielich, I believe, okay? And he actually commissioned this paper, Precious and Structural Metals on Asteroids, by this guy, Kevin Cannon, okay? And he is actually a co-author of this paper. And really, the crux of this paper is this chart right here. So this shows the relative abundance of different metals uh, in asteroids compared to uh, ore veins on Earth, Okay. So you can see basically these platinum group metals are more abundant than they are on Earth in, in Earth deposits. But the problem is they're actually not that much more abundant. You can see almost none of them are more than an order of magnitude more abundant. The only significant one would be iridium, which is known for being very common in meteorites and asteroids. Now, you can see here gold, which again is more valuable than most of the platinum group metals, and most, most importantly more valuable than platinum, is actually the same abundance in the same concentration as it is on Earth, in Earth deposits. So on the face of it, you're, you're mining the same concentration of rock, and then you are expecting to get a cheaper price by mining in space. It just doesn't make any sense. And so this is sort of the, um, the point of my last video. But basically, anyone saying that you could do it cheaper is just simply lying to your face. Now, if you go on their website, you can say here, they say, we mine asteroids to extract valuable minerals in space at a lower cost and smaller carbon footprint. So we already know lower cost is a total lie, and I'll continue on why that is as we go on. Uh, but they also say it's a smaller carbon footprint. Now, this is also a total lie because when you launch something into space, you need to use, you know, 100 to 1,000 times as much fuel to get it out to heliocentric space. Uh, than you do to just mine something on Earth. And again, you have to bring it back. So you actually need even more Delta V uh, than, you, than you need for a normal mission. And you're going to have to do a lot of staging or electric thrusters or a lot of stuff. And it's just a waste of resources, really. Now, here they say, every year terrestrial mining for PGM contributes to the destruction of over 50,000 acres of pristine land and generates millions of tons of toxic waste. Now, this isn't exactly true either because usually... Platinum group metals are mined as a byproduct of other mining operations, or they're found in really concentrated areas. Okay, now their first mission was basically a CubeSat, a 6U CubeSat that they claimed was a refinery demonstration, okay? Now, if you know platinum refining, it actually takes several very complex chemical steps and it's usually done at large scales in these giant platinum mines and platinum uh, precious metal refineries. And so just on the face of it, the idea that you can have a 6U CubeSat doing this exact same thing, it's just impossible. And in my opinion, it was just a total publicity stunt and just a, just a total lie. Now, when you look at the, uh, the update on that first mission, uh, basically the, the refinery baseline checkouts didn't work and the demonstration did not work or it didn't even get to run. Um, so unfortunately we didn't get to see the results of it, which maybe 
Uh, maybe that was convenient for them. But basically now on this next mission, uh, they're going to be flying by the asteroid and just taking a picture. And interestingly, they're not including the refinery payload this time, even though uh, you'd think they would still need to test that, right? So let's hear the CEO explain it. Oh, and by the way, this guy payload, I think I think he asked a lot of good questions. He has a good channel, but he actually had the Aetherflux CEO on, which was the uh, the CEO of one of the space solar companies that I also made a video about. So yeah, definitely check out this guy's video, but a lot of these fraudulent space companies really like to go on this channel. It, the mission later this year is only going to prove that we can get to the fucking asteroid, oh, that see. all okay. of our systems work on it, but it is a flyby mission where we are taking images. So it'll prove out the navigation to get to it, local navigation that would get in preparation for landing. The imagers are successful in operation. And then we'll actually... Okay, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, yeah. And this guy has kind of a strange, unprofessional uh, attitude I kind of noticed over the course of this interview too. But that's kind of a separate thing. Uh, basically, yeah, this new mission is just supposed to... Go fly by, take a picture. Again, it's not even using all the Delta V required to actually uh, get to the asteroid's orbit. It's just flying past it and taking a picture. Again, I'm pretty skeptical that they'll even be able to, to locate it and actually fly past it. Um, this is like a small set, you know, less than, you know, a meter across. And they couldn't even communicate with their last satellite. So I really, I really, I'm doubting it, but uh, actually I'd like to see it work. But now let's see. He's going to explain how his so-called refinery actually works. He's going to explain that payload. Yeah, I mean, so we are going after these M-type asteroids, which we believe are going to be cohesive metal balls in space. Imagine a BB that's 100 meters in diameter mm -hmm. with a whole bunch of like crater impacts on it. That's essentially what we're going after, right? You simply land on it, a technique that we've learned about from some previous companies on how to do this, which I won't get into the details of. Um, we heat up the surface. We turn it into a vapor. And once you have all of those metallic particles in vapor form, you can use magnets to separate them out. And that's simply what we do. So, mm -hmm. Okay, so a few things here. So the first assumption is that these uh, asteroids that he's talking about are M-type asteroids, which, again, has not been proven. And uh, you'll see they even admit that it hasn't been proven later on. Uh, the second thing is he says his method for refining the platinum group metals is just to vaporize the ore, or the, the mostly iron and nickel ore, and then use magnetism to separate that out. The problem is, we already know that it's not pure platinum that's found in these asteroids. It's actually an a alloy between all these uh, platinum group metals and nickel and iron. They form an alloy. So when you turn it into a liquid or a gas, it's just going to stay in the same particles, and they're still going to be magnetic because they're going to be bonded to iron or nickel. So it doesn't work. My hypothesis here is that basically when they did their refinery test, so-called refinery test, they just mixed pure platinum with uh, pure iron or pure nickel. And this was sort of their publicity stunt of doing the same thing. But in meteorites and asteroids, it's actually an alloy. So this just doesn't work. Okay, he's going to continue. It's an economics problem, not, not a want. Trust me, it's a lot easier to refine this shit on the Earth than it is in space. I wish sure. we could, but physics got in the way. For, for the okay, so there he's making a point. I don't know why he said that. He just admitted that uh, it's easier to refine these metals on Earth as it is in, as it is in space. So uh, obviously we use chemical processes, you know, tons of water and chemicals for every, uh, you know, kilogram of, of precious metals that we get. And so, yeah, that's just... Uh, he just said it there. Okay, so getting in this, I'm looking on the platinum production, uh, sorry, platinum Wikipedia page. And basically it says here, platinum is mostly created as a byproduct from nickel and copper mining. Okay. And so they have a, a method of getting that to settle to the bottom of a certain process. Now they do have, if pure platinum is found in placer deposits, you can use a different method. So in this case, a placer deposit is like a gold vein, for example, when uh, the rock gets weathered and then it flows through water in, or uh, other geological processes and settles into a, a certain spot. So the concentration is really high in a certain spot. Okay. That's completely different because it's platinum metal and, or sorry, pure platinum metal. And then it's not bonded in an alloy to nickel and iron. Okay. But in this case, you can see, uh, yeah. So iron and nickel are ferromagnetic. So then you can run an electromagnet over the mixture and you can extract the nickel. 
The other problem is that there's all these other minerals in these asteroids. So you're going to be left with everything else other than iron and nickel. Okay. So you're not just going to be left with the platinum group metals. That just, it doesn't make any sense. You're going to have tons of aluminum, silver, gold, potentially. And again, silver and gold are higher concentrations than platinum group metals. And that's before we even consider aluminum, silicon, uh, carbon. You know, these things are going to be maybe in the couple percent range. And we know that the, um, the platinum group metals are only a few parts per million. Okay, so this is just a total fraud. Okay. Oh, yeah. And, and, okay. So back to his, I'm running, again, this is his paper that he's a co-author on. It says that the total amount of platinum group metals is 230 parts per million. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I had to cut it off. I lost my place in the video, but back, back to where we are. He's going to explain how much mass he wants to bring back. Um, number one, but number two is we're not going to do that. Our spacecraft are very small. They don't bring back a, you know, they're bringing back about uh, anywhere from one to 2,000 kilograms per mission, depending on where we go and some of the trajectory optimizations that we have to go through. So you can see on average, this is between, you know, 70 to about $140 million in return mass per mission that we would bring. Okay, so he thinks he wants to get $70 million back, so he needs to get 1,000 kilograms of platinum group metals back. Now, if you do a little bit of math, 230 parts per million Okay, times or divided by <laughs> whatever the math is, uh, a thousand divided by uh, 230 parts per million, you end up with 4 million kilograms of ore that you need to vaporize to produce these uh, platinum group metals. And again, the vaporization technique doesn't work to refine platinum group metals. It's not, it's just, just fake. And then even if it was real, you would need to vaporize 4 million kilograms of iron and nickel ore on these, on these asteroids. So, uh, yeah, we'll get into it later, but it shouldn't, it's not possible with, a, with our technology today and especially not with a small spacecraft. Um, we have identified really five potential targets that we have very, very high confidence are going to be these M type asteroids with that percentage of platinum. We have a little bit bigger list of other potentials that we need more data on and we're working. <laughs> okay. So here is just totally lying. He says uh, that they have high confidence of uh, whatever that was. Now, that was two years ago. Now, today, they just announced that they're going to be flying to 2022 OB5. And as you can see here in the middle of the paper, they say, um, he says it's 100 meters across and not an S-type stony asteroid. Okay, so maybe they did some basic spectroscopy. They said the company doesn't know yet, though, if it is an M-type metallic asteroid that is most desirable for any mining operations. Now, we do know actual M-type asteroids, but they're much further. They're not near Earth orbit, not necessarily near Earth objects. And if they are, they're just passing in, and most of the time they spend on the asteroid belt. Okay, like I talked about in my last video. Now, the reason they're choosing this one is because its orbit is almost exactly the same as Earth. It's practically orbiting Earth. So they're just doing this because they're getting a ride share to the moon and they can just use a tiny amount of Delta V and fly past this asteroid. It's very, um, it's not a, it's not a complicated or advanced, uh, orbital maneuver here. Um, and again, they don't know it's an M type asteroid. So that's also a major lie. And yeah, it could just be a pile of rocks. The concentration on the specific asteroid and anywhere it takes between one to three months to refine that out. Okay. For okay. Now, there you go. He just said it's going to take one to three months to mine that out. And so what he means by that, again, is vaporizing four million kilograms worth of iron nickel ore. Um, and so I ran this through uh, Chad GPT real quick. And apparently that's going to need 3.3 times 10 to the 13 joules of energy, which is actually almost as much as a nuclear bomb. Uh, and if you spread that over the course of three months... Uh, you're going to need four megawatts of power. Okay, so that's just completely not possible. The, the International Space Station has around 100 kilowatts of power. And again, it's probably uh, hundreds of tons versus like one ton spacecraft. So yeah, this guy, uh, hold on. Yeah, so this guy's just totally lying. So in conclusion, here's a picture of a actual platinum mine and refinery, or this isn't even the refinery. This is just a mine. 
um, that I, I showed on Wikipedia. And now what this company wants you to believe is that they can fit this entire mine, the equivalent of this, into a 6U CubeSat. Okay, and so this is this is total snake oil. It's total nonsense, and I think it's really disturbing. And I think people need to know about this uh, before they keep wasting tens of millions of dollars. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's about the the video for today. I think it's a it's just a really disturbing trend. You see, I I saw the same thing in these in the space solar uh, companies. I, they weren't um, those companies weren't blatantly lying in the same way, so it almost wasn't. Uh, exactly a total fraud in that case, but um, yeah, this one is just a total fraud, and I think it's uh, I think it's gonna be pretty bad in a few years. With that being said, uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time.